Welcome back to the channel, welcome back explorers. My name's Jack and today we're going to be delving into some more NASCAR. I was looking for some NASCAR highlights and then I saw the Elliot Sadler conspiracy. That piqued my interest so I did a quick Google and saw that it was a crash that happened in 2010. Quite a bad one. But there's no footage of it. So I'm curious as to why there's a conspiracy around it. If you're new around here and you like what you see, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, all the good stuff, let YouTube know I'm doing something you like. If you're old around here, welcome back explorers. I don't really know what I'm getting into here, so I don't mean to cause any offences, I don't mean to bring up any bad memories for anyone or anything, but we're diving into it. And without further ado, the Elliot Sadler Conspiracy. Let's get into it, shall we? And Kurt's getting the worst of it. It's like a little bump drafting going on right there. We're trying to gain the advantage. Looks like the 48 got into the back of him a little bit. Boy, he almost came back out onto the track. Man, look at this car. Oh, it's man, further back, Sadler. Sadler. I was going to say, that didn't look that bad. So, everybody knows about this crash. We've all seen it, read about it, and we all know why it's so infamous. Possibly the hardest and most terrifying crash in NASCAR in the last 20 years... I don't, so please forgive my ignorance. I'm still fairly new to the whole thing. ...has almost no public footage. But after looking into the footage of the race, current events around the time, camera angles, and based on other actions NASCAR took at the time, I believe NASCAR could have footage of the crash, but is withholding it from the public eye and withheld it at the time for a few specific reasons. Now, this is not a new idea, but I took it a step further. This video is going to go over all the evidence that suggests that NASCAR actually has footage of the wreck. And you definitely have not heard this before, because I'm the only person stupid enough to look through and analyze <laughs> every camera angle during this race and read every related article. You're not stupid, I'm usually it's a not passion. a tinfoil hat conspiracy guy, but after I dug into this rabbit hole, I just had to share it. Before you make any comments saying how this is a reach for views or whatever, I just want you to hear me out. Because there is a lot of evidence in this case. So please watch the entire video before making any I'm not any doing this for views, I'm very anyway, just let's curious as to what this conspiracy is. First of all, let's get the facts of this crash so we're on the same page. With 36 laps to go in the 2010 Sunoco Red Cross Pennsylvania 500, Jimmy Johnson tagged Kurt Busch in the rear, and sent him across the nose of Clint Boyer. After hitting the outside wall, Kurt came back across the track. Rest of the field started to check up to avoid the wreck number two car, and in the midst of the chaos, AJ Allmendinger got into the back of Elliott Sadler. Sadler slid across the grass and hit the inside guardrail at the worst possible angle, causing oh, a massive Oh wow, he literally keyboned it. Car. In the following minutes, only a single replay showcased Whoa. the moment of impact of Sadler's car, and no other footage was shown of the wreck. But maybe they were just waiting Why? for an update of Sadler's condition to show a full makes replay. Makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. Maybe the ESPN crew was scrambling to find a good angle of the wreck. After all, they used dozens and dozens of cameras every race weekend. But miraculously, no footage ever surfaced of the crash. Looking That's at the rear weird. bumper of Kurt's car, you can just barely make out the impact, but honestly, this doesn't add too much to the story. Even looking at comments on YouTube and Reddit, everybody sees something different in this pixelated footage. So this is great that it exists, <laughs> yeah, however, but it doesn't no add help. <laughs> much to what we already know. There's a fan angle that almost catches the crash on camera, but it is hard to see despite its Filmed quality being enhanced and stabilized. You can see Sadler's car a little bit, but that's about it. Mm. So that's all the footage of the wreck that is currently out there, at least to the public. Now this is where I get into my theory of there actually being crash footage. So first, let's take a look at some onboard cameras. During this time, NASCAR would show drivers who were equipped with onboard and in-car cameras at the beginning of the race. There were 9 drivers total equipped with ESPN's onboard cameras, the three key drivers being Jamie McMurray, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Kurt Busch. 
Alrighty. So, as we already talked about earlier in the video, Kurt Busch had a rear view camera on his car in addition to the onboard hood camera. We can infer that the other seven drivers that were chosen to carry the onboard cameras <laughs> also had the same rear view camera as Kurt. This said, I really couldn't find a time throughout the race that they were used other than in this replay. This is probably because the angles were pretty bad, so they were only used as a last resort. But the point is that the other key drivers, Jamie McMurray and Dylan Hart Jr., would have existing footage from this same rear view camera. Yeah, because they were all this within the pack. This is important because whenever the contact between AJ and Elliot Sadler happened, they were running in the low 20s, somewhere around 25th to 29th. When mm. the caution came out, McMurray was running 17th, and Dylan Hart Jr. was in 23rd. Like I said before, we've seen Kurtz on board, and if it wasn't for some smoke, we could have probably seen Sadler's impact. I think from either of the rearview cameras, we could have seen at least something. Maybe not mm -hmm. the moment of impact, but at least the initial contact, or Elliot's car bouncing back oh. out on the track. My question is... In the only view of Sadler's why? impact, you can see Jimmy Johnson and Matt Kenseth making their way through the tunnel turn. They were in 12th and 13th at the time of caution. So we can infer that the cars behind them were still on the straight stretch mm -hmm. and had a clear view of the carnage behind them. Especially Darren Hart Jr. in 23rd. Yeah, that's he must crazy. have had a good angle of at least part of the crash. From Kurt's onboard, we can see how wide of an area the camera could cover. As it just said, considering McMurray was already... Uh, the crash was already taking place before McMurray had even passed him on the track. That is... Surely there would be footage there, considering he was the in racer. Anyway, I'm not going to pause it too much. It's a long From video. From the inside wall all the way to the outside this is, wall. Why would they not so have footage of it? The that we would have seen something from one of these onboard cameras. How peculiar. Namely McMurray's or Junior's. I'm aware of the argument that... Is it because there was like... They didn't want to tarnish another racer's reputation, or they didn't want to show someone else making a vital mistake, something like that, you know? Junior McMurray may just not have had rear view cameras, but that just doesn't add up to me. It is very unlikely that Kurt would have been the only car in the entire field with one, especially during a time when Dell Jr. was still racing and by far the most popular mm -hmm. driver. Not to mention that all three drivers were being covered by ESPN's onboard cameras. So moving on to the next suspicious thing I found which was that during the lone angle of Elliot's impact on the wall, oh you can tell Lord. that the camera started to pan over to Sadler, but it just fades into another angle. Even if the cameraman was still unaware of Sadler crashing, and he was following Kurt Busch's car with the camera, from that angle, it would have revealed yeah, Sadler's that's car crazy. speeding up the Where's track the at the very least. Kurt Busch. I think at the very last instant of the clip, the cameraman noticed Sadler's crash, because it appeared that the camera started to zoom out as well. I feel like if we saw five yeah, like seconds a tracking from this angle, it would reveal much shot. more of the crash. And this is probably the claim that I feel the most bold about in this video. It's pretty undeniable that the camera started panning and zooming out to the right, directly towards Sattler's car, but for some reason, the clip cut away. Now, I want to get into a couple of camera angles that could have clear-cut views of Sadler's initial contact with AJ, the impact with the inside wall, and everything after. So, this is an angle that was shown at least a dozen times throughout the broadcast. The cameraman would focus on the leaders or a battle throughout the middle of turn 1, follow them through the exit of the turn, and then once they got through the camera, he would let the field fly by down the straight stretch until the tunnel turn. How so strange. we never got a replay of the crash so why was this it, yeah. way, and why there's was it no reason angle? why he wouldn't have had the camera pointed towards that crash. Oh, so At the time off. Kurt Busch started <laughs> wrecking, there were still cars going through the exit of turn 1, and the cameraman would have certainly seen the crash starting to happen. Although the crash was far away, his job is to capture the action, so yeah. he would have definitely at least pointed the camera in the direction of the incident, and from this angle, we would have been able to see both Sadler and Butch. Yeah, you'd have the seen both cars that come we off see the track. makes it even harder to believe that they didn't get footage of the crash, and this is a camera placed in turn two to look back at the cars coming from turn one. After digging through the entire race, I only found a couple of instances of this camera panning to the right to show turn two. For the overwhelming majority of the race, it was focused on the straight between turns one and two. 
Here you can see the camera was actually sitting stationary, facing that direction until the field came by. You can't blame a lack of skill ah. reaction on this cameraman, as here he shows how lightning fast he reacted to a piece of debris coming off of Kyle Bush's car. When you combine this that with the fact that an well. actual wreck was going on in the direction that was his focus to cover, I feel like it's unlikely that he just Bit missed weird. the wreck. Yeah. Even if he was pointed to the right focusing on turn 2, I think he could have definitely reacted fast enough to at least capture the tail end of the crash. These guys cover the sport for a living. He would have seen and heard the chaos coming from the other direction and immediately pointed his camera that way. I mean, look at his view after the wreck. Yeah, that's that a bit crazy the that there would not be a head-on shot from either all. end of the Keep track. Keep in mind, we only saw three different angles of Kurt hmm. Busch's wreck. NASCAR tends to show about three to four replays for even a relatively small crash, but we've yeah, seen true. anywhere from six to seven for more major incidents. The broadcast typically just shows off the best few angles, but in an instance where there was so much going on, we would have definitely expected them to show every available camera like angle everything happening, just yeah. to try to put the puzzle together. At first, I wrestled with the idea of NASCAR withholding footage from the public, but then I found a few other cases of NASCAR doing just this. In 2000, I oh, had really? a terrible crash at Michigan in practice. He blew a tire, and according to Sadler, Whoa! he flipped he went off the 13 times. My word! Sadler also later said that NASCAR actually had footage of the wreck, but kept it secret because he flipped higher than the catch fence. It's pretty obvious why NASCAR would want to hide this. Whoa! I mean, everybody would be calling for Whoa. Bad catch fences at every track. Yeah, that's absolutely insane. That gave me goosebumps. I had a car flying higher this was at than the crash fence. when Basilar skull fractures were taking the lives of many drivers. The last thing NASCAR would want is another safety hazard stealing the headlines. Back in 2013, after Kyle Larson's horrifying crash oh, at Daytona, oh, NASCAR oh, was accused oh. of abusing YouTube's DMCA to try to take down footage of fan videos of the wreck. Videos of the broadcast you could argue were rightly taken down, because after all, it's just NASCAR's unaltered content. However, it is. fan videos are in no way property of NASCAR. Yeah, you can't. Steve you Phillips can't. had this to say about it. The fan video of the wreck on the final. Listen, I understand on YouTube the stuff that I watch and react to, it gets copyright claimed and demonetized, or they claim the money because it's their intellectual property. You can't start saying to people that are, are fans, it'd be like if they took a photograph of the crash. The video is still just their perspective. You can't. They, okay, give me your phone then as you come in. Ugh. The lap of today's NASCAR Nationwide Series race was blocked on YouTube out of respect for those injured in today's accident. That makes sense. Information on the status of those fans was if unclear. If people get injured or die, I can understand why they don't want footage online. With this very serious incident. Look at that Owen That is Hart. a very respectable answer, but you can't blame them for that response. However, it does open the door for what kind of censorship NASCAR does behind the scenes. There That's have been a bit crazy, actual yeah. documented cases of police confiscating security cam or video footage of fatal wrecks, but Sadler's crash wasn't fatal, so we're not comparing apples to apples. That's what I can understand. However, there if is someone one dies, case that is pretty They need incredible. the evidence. In 2008, just two years before Sadler's accident at Pocono, Jeff Gordon endured one of the hardest hits of the 21st century at Las Vegas. Oh! The crash was shown on air and we saw some replays. However, Gordon was selected to carry an onboard camera for the race. He had one on the front. Out of curiosity, I've spoken in previous videos about the faults of drivers as they feel their car lift off and take off through the air and start flipping. I wonder what drivers... Because they've all reacted quickly in cars or on motorcycles and stuff like that, but like, you're doing 190 miles an hour and then suddenly there's a wall coming at you. What goes through? I know that they're very, very safe in their vehicles, but it's still got to be that moment where you feel your butthole pucker and you think, oh, I might need some new underwear after this. Front, one on the rear, and one in the car. As a side note, so this is everywhere. another piece of evidence that I have to support that McMurray and Del Hart Jr. also had rear view cameras, but I really couldn't bring it up at that point. 
Anyway, they showed a replay of Gordon's crash on board during the broadcast, but they used it in a smart way. They started the replay with his front on board, then once he made contact with Kendrick, oh, they switched and to his rear camera yep. and cut to his in-car camera seconds mm -hmm. after the impact. They didn't show the footage because, quote, Gordon's body moved in a way during the crash that the crew found disturbing. A few days later, Gordon asked oh, to yeah. see that in-car replay. Since then, there has been no mention of that replay. Now, there are a couple things to take away from this. So first of all, that's fine that the production crew didn't want to show disturbing footage to a mass TV audience. It makes sense. However, this shows that even though that angle would have added more to the context of the crash, yeah, they he didn't, didn't show die. It. He wasn't of all, injured. Gordon wasn't majorly injured either. And finally, NASCAR never hmm. released the footage. So that means that just two years prior to Elliot Sadler's crash at Pocono, NASCAR has a documented case of them withholding crash footage. So what if that's what happened with the Sadler crash? Maybe the TV crew weren't certain of Elliot's condition. He was I can understand insane, that. And he was getting but out of the But why would there be no footage so years after? So that would be understandable as to why, why they would hold off on a replay. Maybe the production team stumbled upon the now infamous camera angle of Sadler's mm -hmm. impact and decided to show that replay simply to tell part of the story without showing what they deemed to be disturbing footage of the wreck. Now, that seems likely to me. Now to the key question of my theory. Why would NASCAR want to withhold this footage? Fans have been begging for answers for more than a decade, and after all, Elliot Sadler was not majorly injured. I still think it would have been a bad look for them. Remember, this was in the Car of Tomorrow era, in which they made uh, sweeping changes in the name of safety. Yep. Anytime they got backlash, they would say something to the extent of, well, safety is our number one priority, which is fair enough. But they definitely answering used this excuse answering too question. much after poor racing quality. However, I don't think NASCAR was the only one that Terrible. wanted this footage to be hidden. Pocono Terrible. Raceway would have been under much more fire about the design of their track. Not only having an angle so sharp in the wall, but relying on guardrails and piles of dirt as inside walls to protect the drivers is a safety standard that had been outdated for a decade at that yep. point. In fact, I... on June 5th of that year, it was reported that Pocono was going to replace the inside wall with safer this barriers is what I'm saying. You're following basically crashing studies and into recommendations from the Midwest Roadside Safety Facility at the University of Nebraska. The blame would have also been shared on NASCAR, as they acknowledged the study's findings and continued to let drivers race on an unsafe track. So it was definitely uh. mutually beneficial. So overall, this is my theory. After Elias Sadler's terrible crash, the production crew found a couple disturbing angles and replays of Sadler's wreck. In addition to this, they were unaware of Sadler's condition and made the decision to only show a single replay that revealed what happened to Sadler, but cut that replay short Ugh, so that the mass insane. TV audience wouldn't see what they deemed too disturbing for TV. After the higher-ups at NASCAR, Pocono, and ESPN discussed, they elected to not show any replays of this crash later on in the broadcast after it was confirmed Sadler was okay. NASCAR and Pocono officials continued discussions later on about the implications of releasing the footage of the crash and the Pandora's box of blame and backlash they would open. Eventually, they decided to do exactly what they did with Jeff Gordon's in-car camera in 2008, and just keep it under wraps, out of the public eye forever. Why? And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, and even if I, I did, did not thank completely you for convince me. you of my theory, that's okay. I hope you found it interesting at least. Once again, this is just a theory. I don't know that this is 100% accurate, just pure speculation for entertainment. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like and subscribe so you never miss a banger video. That's all I got for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Alright, make sure you go and subscribe to NFJJ. Go leave me a like, a comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. That was not as in-depth when you hear conspiracy theories you think that it's like crazy out there you know but why why would they be withholding footage i understand if the parties involved passed away severely injured disfigured etc etc or they do genuinely lose an arm or a limb or their life i understand that 
But why would you take away footage of someone that comes out of it seemingly unscathed and then it's amazing footage to be like, look at the safety of our cars. He hit the barrier and he's completely fine. But, hmm. If you did like what you saw, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. Let me know what I should watch next. Have a great day. Be well and bye-bye.